Hey, okay, let's talk about multi-factor conversions. So, sometimes not one step, sometimes not two step, but sometimes multi-steps are needed. So let's look at when that happens. So, look at this example right here. 55 miles an hour to meters per second. Okay, look, you're converting not just from miles to meters, but from hours to seconds. You have multiple conversions going on at once here. So how do you handle that? The good news is, this is going to involve a lot of multiplication division, and multiplication division can be done in multiple different ways and give the same answer. 4 times 5 is the same as 5 times 4. So the good answer is, I'm going to show you one way to solve this, and there's actually many ways to solve these. As long as you do the right steps, the precise order of the steps is not going to be super important. So that's the good news. Now let's look at what am I doing at this. Convert one unit at a time. So you can start by converting miles to meters, or you can start by converting hours to seconds. It actually doesn't matter which you do. But check out what I did here. I have this whole process. And how did this happen? I started with what I always do. The first thing you write down is the given any time you try to solve something. You are given 55 miles an hour. So I put 55.00 miles, just like it says here, per hour. Now, this one right here, that's implied because it's 55 miles per one hour. Okay, so that's where that one comes from, 55 miles an hour. Now, we want to convert to meters per second. If I'm going to convert from miles to meters and hours to seconds, again, it doesn't matter whether I convert miles first or hours first. I'll do miles first just because. This is what the steps looks like, but how did I get there? Let's reconstruct that. I need to look at my reference sheet. I need to figure out how to get from miles to meters. So if I want to get from miles to meters, the reference sheet does not say how many meters are in a mile. And I know you can Google that, don't. Okay, stick with what's on the reference sheet. The reason why I say don't is because I know you can figure out how many meters are in a mile off Google, but I'm not going to accept that on the test. You've got to show me the steps. So what that means is on a reference sheet, it does tell you how many miles are in a kilometer, or how many kilometers are in a mile. It tells you both, actually. So you convert miles to kilometers. And then you can convert a kilometer to a meter. So what we do is we put miles on bottom so we can cancel as we go from miles to kilometers. And then we're going to go from kilometers to meters. So we put kilometers here so it cancels and meters on top. So miles cancel miles, kilometer cancel kilometer, leaving meter as your unit on top. Great. If we stop here, your final unit will be miles or meters on top, hours on bottom. You have meters per hour, but that's not what it's asking. It's asking for meters per second, not meters per hour. So we got to keep going. You want to convert from hours to minutes to seconds. I know some people are like, well, I don't know how many seconds are in an hour. Well, good for you. Half the other people who said that were wrong last year. So you're going to say how many hours in a minute. So how many minutes in an hour, how many seconds are in a minute? So uh, the way we do that is we just keep this going over here. Notice how hours is on bottom. If you want to convert from hours to minute, you can do that, but make sure that if you have hours on bottom, you put hours on top. That way hour can cancel with hour. And of course we go from hours to minute. And then from minutes to seconds, because remember we do have seconds on bottom at the end. So put minutes on top so it can cancel, and then seconds on bottom. So what do we have? Hour cancels hour, minute cancels minute, leaving meters on top and seconds on bottom. This is how you know you've got it set up correctly. Meters per second. I know that's probably off screen, sorry. Um, that said, what do we do next? After you set up your units, now you can do the numbers. So 55 miles an hour, great. How many kilometers a mile? Your reference sheet says one mile is 1.61 kilometers. How many meters in a kilometer? Kilo means a thousand. Put the big number next to the smaller unit, a thousand meters to a kilometer. How many hours, or what's the issue? Hours and minutes, okay? You should know one hour is 60 minutes. You should know that one minute is 60 seconds. So at this point then, you can then go this times this times this, divide by this, divide by this, and that's what's animated. So this is the process of how I went through it. 
to get what you saw animated up there earlier, which I will bring back now to look like this. Getting that is the raw calculator output. Okay, so having done all that, you need to then ask yourself how you're going to round this. And the answer is going to depend on these as well as this. This is four significant figures. This is an English and a metric unit. This is mixed. So this is four significant figures. This is three significant figures, because English and metric, different measuring systems, three sig figs. Don't worry about that, just three sig figs. These are both metric, so this is infinity significant figures. Yes, that the sideways eight means infinity. These are both time units, infinity significant figures. These are both time units, infinity significant figures. All right, that's why your final answer for this one will get rounded to three significant figures and boxed, of course, because of the fact that you've got three significant figures in this conversion factor right here. All right, so that's how I go about that. Now, what if I had gone about and done it differently? Just to repeat one of the things I said earlier, just to make it clear. What if I had started with the one hour, uh, no numbers, units only, hour, minute, minute, second, and like converted the one on bottom first and then the one on top. Mile, kilometer, kilometer, meter. If you've done it differently, hour cancel hour, minute cancel minute, meaning seconds, mile cancels mile, kilometer cancels kilometer, meaning meters, and you would have, I know, I, for the sake of time, I won't go through the whole thing, but if you plug all the numbers and do it all, yes, you would get exactly the same answer. So it doesn't matter whether you convert the top or bottom unit first, just get it converted and you're fine. So let's bring this back and move on to a couple other things. All right, so that's another practice one. If you were to practice that out, hopefully you'd come up with the same thing. Uh, let's see. This is something here to, this is here something to try out. So let's go through this, this one, because I know this is on your handout for the notes. Converting from the density of copper from pounds per cubic inch to grams per cubic centimeter. Again, I know this can be looked up on Google, but you need to actually show that you know how to do the conversion. So notice we give you this information, you can totally use this. As always, write your given, 0 0.324 pounds per cubic inch. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna make it work with the units in order to go from pounds per cubic inch to grams per cubic centimeter. So you give them pounds to kilograms and from inches to cubic centimeters. So from inches to cubic centimeters, you can do that directly. So the bottom part's good. For the top part, if you're given pounds, your information will only tell you from pounds to kilograms. However, once you're converted to kilograms, it should be easy to go from kilograms to grams. So that's what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna turn that off and we're gonna make it easier to have the space to do this. We're gonna do this to this using that information that was given earlier. Yes, that's right, the one kilogram is 2.20 pounds, one cubic inch is 16.4 cubic centimeters. I'll even put these up here for reference to make it easier for me to show you. And one cubic inch equals 16.4 centimeters cubed. Now, I say equals loosely because metric, English, English, metric, these are approximates. This is not infinite sig figs. This is three sig figs. This is three sig figs. Anyway, let's do this conversion. One pound. So pound is going to cancel with, uh, let's see, from pound to kilogram. And then we'll cancel kilogram with gram. This will let me have grams on top. See, this is what I'm aiming for. I want grams on top. I want centimeters cubed on the bottom. Pound cancel pound. Kilogram cancel kilogram. Gram on top. That's good. 
Now for inches. See, I'm zooming on my off screen here. No, you're good. Okay, so inches turn to cubic centimeters. So we can simply do that. Inches cubed is on bottom. Cubic centimeters. Uh, it will go on bottom because if inches cubed on bottom there, then it needs to be on top here so that you can cancel. And so when that does, we are left with grams on top and cubic centimeters on bottom. So let's go ahead and plug the numbers in. So one kilogram is 2.20 pounds. By the way, you should be able to tell me, I'm going to put this 2.20 pounds where? Top or bottom? Tell me now. All right, hopefully you said bottom. And an automatic one goes in the other one. Grams per kilogram. You should know. Kilo means a thousand. Big number goes next to the small unit. So one kilogram is a thousand grams. And then finally, it said it gave us this information. One cubic inch is 16.4 cubic centimeters. So we have this number divided by this number times this number divided by this number. Okay, so if you type it in, you do all that, that's your answer that comes out, the 8.98 grams per cubic centimeter. Oops, there we go. Of course, we make sure to box all our answers and understand why does that round to the three significant figures? Partly because you started with three sig figs, but even if you had like more sig figs at the end, like I just added two more, so this is five sig figs, it would still be three because of this right here and this right here, both limit to three significant figures. All right, now, that said, let's look at other things. All right, that's Mr. Holguin on vacation right there, visiting Ukraine, formerly Soviet Union, and saw this cool little something. It says, Это пушка вайны трофе, её вес 250 пудов, а бомби 2 пуда 6... Uh, which means this cannon is a war trophy and it weighs 250 poods. That's an imperial Russian measure of, you measure of weight. So for fun, we just go and see what exactly is that, a, a pood or 250 of them. So we can look up the measurements right here and we can do the conversion. And so I know on your, your handout it says to convert this and this, but for time's sake, let's just do the cannon. 250 poods. All right, so how do we do that? We are going to, uh, okay, use this information, which I will have it on screen there, but I'll have to remove from here, so I'm going to have nowhere to write it. And actually, let me do something. Let me turn it off and then freeze and then get it back so I can look at the reference information. So what are we given? It says a 250 pood cannon. Or I guess you can go all Cyrillic if you like. But either way, uh, what we do with this here is we got to take our units and figure out how to turn it into what we want, which is pounds. So the pood, it gives us its 40 funds, which is their equivalent of a pound. So one pood. So we can go from pood to funds, and okay, that works, but that's not our final answer we're looking for, so we got to keep going, because it also gives us from funds to, um, to grams, and then we can do our final conversion from grams to pound. Right, so this is what we're given. So this cancels this, this cancels this, this cancels this. So notice we take each equivalency that we're given, how many points is how many funds is in a pound, how many grams is in a funt, how many grams is in a pound, all that sort of a thing. And it allows us to figure out how we can arrange these units so they cancel. And then what it tells us, what numbers actually go in there. Okay, where's the oh that's right, I need to un freeze it. There we go. Okay. So, how many fonts is in a pood? 
There we go. So 40 funts is one pood. So we put a 40 pound funts is one pood. One, uh, let's see, grams and funts. So one funt is approximately 409.517. And then one pound is approximately 453 grams. So one pound is approximately 450. Oops, I can't write. Point uh, six grams. And so that is the reason why you see this, why I've set up the way I did. You make sure the units cancel. You put in the unit equivalencies correctly because this is what was given to us for each. And then when all of this is done, this times this times this divided by this equals this. Yeah, 9,000 pounds. That's a pretty heck, that's a really heavy cannon. Um, make sure, of course, that you convert that to scientific notation and round correctly for significant figures. What? Two sig figs? Yeah, that's two significant figures. Notice there's no decimal. And uh, this is exact. This is infinity significant figures. However, this is six sig figs and this is four significant figures. But nonetheless, this limits us to two. Okay, obviously, don't forget to box your answers. And then, uh, just for fun, I guess there's the other parts of it. What would it come out to? Uh, oh, there you go. Uh, the bombs are heavy too. But anyway, this I believe is the last of the questions that you had on your handout. How many atoms of copper are in a pure copper penny? All right, they're not pure copper in real life, but whatever, close enough. So the thing here is you need this information that you're given in order to be able to do this. And this does allow you to do it. You just treat these like units. Because what you can do is you can say, all right, well, what are you given? What's you given? It's right there, 3.1 grams. And then you just do what you need with the units in order to make them cancel. So you can go from grams to this unit of mole, and then you can go from unit of mole to this unit of atom. And that's what it's asking you. So what you do is you simply, from grams to moles, you can put grams on bottom so that it cancels and moles on top because you have this relationship between grams and moles. And then you have this relationship between moles and atoms. So you put mole on bottom. That way mole cancels mole because it's not supposed to be part of your final answer. This is your answer, atoms. And you put atoms on top. Let's see, I don't remember if I, oh, I didn't animate the whole process. All right, I guess that means I do have to work the whole thing out. Not that it's too difficult because you simply say, okay, look, one mole, 63.55 grams. So one mole is 63.55 grams. And then for here, one mole is that many, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Rather than calculating, don't forget to put parentheses around this or you will mess up. So this divided by this times this equals that 2.9 times 10 to the 22 atoms of copper. Again, two significant figures, four significant figures. Yes, different measuring systems. Uh, this is the same measuring system, but it's rounded for your convenience. More about that in a future unit, but nonetheless, that's four significant figures. But two sig figures rounds into two, so that's the reason why we rounded it the way that we did. All right, so there we go. That shows you how dimensional analysis can help you find a wide variety of answers to a wide variety of questions. And that completes that.